beautiful time of day. Greetings, people of Earth. Beauties all over the world. It's a beautiful evening. Down one of my favorite places. Beautiful Aramotha. Full moon. Well, it was there. Almost a full moon. Pretty much a full moon. You know what I mean? Ant colonies here in Fervor. Oops. Getting all that delicious nectar. Can you see her? There they are. You know, we can learn so much from ants. Some of our greatest teachers. They're service to the collective is absolutely noble you know to us we would look at this as them constantly working but i truly intuitively believe that it is an ant's absolute pleasure her pleasure to serve her colony and that's all they know. Look, they've, they love the flowers so much. I think they've eaten like a whole. And then in the center, you know, like an ant's dedication to the whole, to the collective. It's just so inspirational for us. I mean, it's absolute flawless consistency, flawless organization, and totally inspiring. And I watch as soon as, um, I've got a couple of lines of ants, main highways out my front door, and even when I step over them, they scatter. Um, anybody that comes, I will tell them to mind the ants because they have a noble cause, a purpose that is unmatched. They are our alkalizers of the planet. They break down everything, they decompose everything. Our tiny yet very powerful garbage collectors. People of Earth, I have some sad news to share. has finally passed on and returned to the eternal cosmic fires after a month's long battle of not being able to walk, limping, and me absolutely doing anything I can to make her comfortable. So, I would carry her around basically everywhere on a pillow and she was getting progressively worse and she died in my arms yesterday morning at about 7.30, almost the same time as Dima and it was a quick exit. She had watermelon for breakfast, I moved her in front of the heater and she had a God Almighty fit and she went out quickly after that and I was with her for her last breaths. So, two queens have passed. Two queens, Shalaha was my queen, temple goddess. I named her after the temple goddess Shalaha of Babylon. If you've ever read my book, The Uranus Medallion, you know exactly what I'm talking about. She was the temple goddess, big, and beautiful, silky feathers, yet a very gentle personality, and she loved her sisters. She especially loved Venus when the two of them were together. She would clean her and try to pick any f loose feathers off her or
pick away the lice if there was any on just breathing so I think there's been a lot of loss today <laughs> oh anyway so I buried her um, yesterday and now it's just me and Venus and I'm, I'm with Venus. I'm with Venus. For most of the day, any time, any part of the waking day, I'm with her because I would hate for her to be feeling lonely. And I know she would be to some extent. But I give her cuddles all the time. She's always sitting on my lap. Greetings, beauty, honey eater. I can see your little shadow. So it's an adjustment. I hope Venus is okay because I've decided not to get any more chickens. As much as I love their company, anybody that has animals that deeply, deeply loves and cherishes them will know how much of a commitment it is to truly give them the absolute best life possible and I have done my very best so uh, and with that comes responsibility and if I wasn't with them I'd always be fretting about them just like a mother would a child so I feel you know whatever fate that beholds Venus I will be her best friend, her mother, her confidant, um, to her last breath. And even if I was to introduce more chickens now, she's too old to need that stress in her life. The, the stress of working out who's the boss, fighting it off, and that's just so much unwanted, unnecessary stress for her. And she's got friends, she's got little spoggy friends that are with her all day. There's a little pigeon as well. Um, so, you know, and I'll be with her. She's with me. She's on any time that I'm at my computer, working at my jewelry bench. There she is. She's sitting on my knee. She's on my lap. So she has me with her. The only thing I was concerned about was having her um, alone at night. But I figured if I change her sleeping now and bring her inside, you know, her bed is what she knows. So I'm just going to leave her there and I warm up this little brick. It's like an animal brick and it stays hot for like 10 hours, 10, 12 hours. I warm that up for her and put that, wrap it up in a tea towel and just put it next to her so she's got some warmth. But animals are unbelievable in their intuition, without a doubt. They both would have known this was coming and their purpose is of such a higher order they are everything is decided before they come in because humans many humans do not understand the incredible arrangement that has taken place prior to this life to come in and animals can teach humans not only to love unconditionally and so deeply and give them lessons beyond anybody's understanding, but also humans can teach animals refined evolution by having that human interaction. So having a species interaction, interspecies interaction that they may not have otherwise experienced. Consciousness flows through infinite amounts of forms and beings and realities. And so Shalaha's consciousness, all it's done is just been reabsorbed, reabsorbed back 
into the radiance. And as it will be for all of us, reabsorbed back in, we'll be pulled back in when our time comes. So, life is a funny old thing, isn't it, people of Earth?